Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, I love listening to both of you. I really do. I'm, you know, I wish I had allocated five hours for this. So it's great. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask you a bunch of stuff and I'm going to have to ask you to give 30 second answers, no more, because <clears throat> I literally just really want to know what you think about a bunch of things. And it's not <laughs> realistic to explain your answer. So just give us the answer. Um, try to wrap at each point in 30 seconds and we could always come back at this time. But let's try that because I really would like to ask you a bunch of things. You ready? We're ready. Okay. So without using up our time, just as quickly as we can, um, Dr. Delgado, you are saying to avoid oil. Brian, you're saying that oil can be part of the diet. Um, we won't go into too much detail here, but can you each comment on Dr. Delgado first, then Brian, 30 seconds about consuming olive oil, hemp oil, or flax oil? Well, I have experimented on people's blood for more than 46 years, and I even did an experiment how to become diabetic in six hours, and I walked in the studio after eating the way I eat, and I fast only 12 hours from the time I go to bed till the morning time I wake up, and because I'm on a lean whole foods diet, there's not a lot of protein, foreign proteins from animal product and dairy, and so my blood is very clean. Even during the day while I eat, my blood looks like I've been fasting. When doctors ask me if I fasted for my blood test, I kind of, so I they don't prevent me from doing the test, I kind of like nod, yeah, I've been, but I've been eating whole fresh foods, okay? And because I don't use oils, it doesn't elevate my triglycerides. And people will say, eat fat to burn fat. Well, they're a little confused. You, you do need fat, but you get it in every whole food. Even potatoes have fat in it. Even fruit has fat in it. Not a lot, but I do want the essential fatty acids. So I will eat nuts, seeds, avocados, and olives in small amounts re relative to my body weight and where I'm at. So I think that in reference to the question, did I answer that to, uh, well? Or was there a point I missed? Good enough. Thank you. Brian? In my latest book, The Self-Healing Diet, I explain a new study that came out that was surprising even to me that showed uh, long chain omegas, oleic acids, literally switch on the most aggressive part of your immune system. So there's evidence, and these were using small amounts of high quality oils. Uh, also, there is a an wide consensus with those of us in the plant-based community that those who, by the way, avoid taking adequate amounts of oil, and I listened to Nick closely, he didn't say he avoids oil, he said because of the way and the amount that he eats, because he's very active, he's getting the kind of oils that produce DHEA, DHA. And also, unlike 99% of you out there, he's testing himself on an ongoing basis, which I am. That's a disadvantage that you have and an advantage we have. But dementia is absolutely connected with people who don't get adequate amounts of oil. And so we've got to be very cautious when we say don't eat oil and discourage people from who are not going to eat as wide a cross-section of plant-based foods with adequate oils in it. You know, in my diet, frankly, I don't need much oil, although I put a little bit on my salad. Uh, between the nuts, the seeds, the avocados we eat, spinach has oil, lettuce has oil. There's not a, a, a as uh, you just said, Nick, there's not a plant in the world that doesn't have oil. So uh, contrary to the consensus out there, uh, I think Nick, uh, Dr. Cousins, who we were on the other night, uh, also uh, Dr. Furman and I agree you can't avoid oil. Uh, because we see too many of our colleagues not doing so well as they age. Okay, next question, 30 seconds. Definitely not a long discussion, just quick. Brian, you've been very clear 200 times that fruit's been hybridized. You're saying it's too sweet and it's being picked on ripe and therefore is missing minerals. Um, none of us want cancer and you're saying it feeds yeast, mold, fungus, and cancer. Yes. Nick, um, Brian has made that point many times about fruit. Do you have a 30 second response to that? Well, 
I look at my blood virtually every day and I look to the people who developed the glycemic index and it was their hypothesis when asked how much fruit can you eat? You can eat 10 or more pieces of whole fruit a day. Now, granted, it's great. Get organic, get it uh, GMO free. Uh, I find that that's critically important. And I think that might alter the quality of the consumption of fruit itself. And I think that because it's a medium calorie food, clearly it helps people to reduce weight. Fruit lowers blood pressure. Fruit helps thyroid levels. Uh, I eat a wide variety of fruits myself. And uh, I'm one that, you know, much like Joel Furman, I, I will do greens, berries, onions, leeks, mushrooms, uh, beans and nuts and seeds. Uh, the bigger the variety, the better. And I base it on what is my current weight, my energy levels. I know if I eat fruit, it's not going to last me very long. If I eat tubers and sweet potatoes and beans cooked long enough, it's going to stay in my system. So I think the key about oil is that it is amount of dose related. I'm thinking if you think in terms of a little teaspoon mixed in, it's almost like a medication because oil is so concentrated. You're going to get what you need. But honestly, Dr. Press did studies where he rubbed oil on the skin and in people who had been on glucose IV and the 0.01% they absorbed through their skin relieved any essential fatty acid deficiency. I would lend that dementia is of concern and look at the Alzheimer's story. Dr. Alzheimer autopsied brains and he found massive atherosclerotic plaques, multiple small strokes in those who were animal eating. They had plaques because of the cholesterol consumption, but the plant eaters, their brains were clear. They didn't have dementia or Alzheimer's. So I would lend that cognition depends on oxygen and oxygen depends on red blood cells. If they freely float through the bloodstream uninhibited, just think of on the head of a pin, there's 8 million red blood cells. A drop of blood will coat those cells together. So just if you're using enough, just below where your exercise levels burning those triglycerides and fat. If you're a couch potato and you're going to Indian restaurant eating oil in the recipe, you're going to feel tired and fatigued. And I guarantee your triglycerides will speak up, spike out at 300, 400, 500 and above. Mine range between 60 and about 100 after eating 150. And the truth is, I don't gorge myself. Now that I understand adrenals and my cortisol levels, I find that I'm not constantly craving and overeating. And that helps me to regulate the amount of food correctly. And so I think oils are healthy for us in moderation, but I would prefer to rub them on the skin. And if you're using anything beyond a few teaspoons, that I would lend will clump the blood cells together and downstream two red blood cells stuck together at the capillary level will not get through. And that oxygen will be inhibited. And study after study shows low oxygen contributes to cancer. So I'm a big believer that uh, when they took Dr. Arcano's studies and they had a group of people eating uh, a whole foods diet, they then added oil to their diet. Their blood pressure went up. They took the oil out. It was at about 15% of calories and fat. It was a, a lot of fresh fruit and vegetables, beans, and peas. And they added salt. And the salt, even at high levels, did not increase blood pressure until they got to a certain gram level. So it's not salt. You go to every restaurant and they say it's salt, take it off. I'm not an advocate of using a bunch of salt, but I'm telling you, you better take care of your oil first if you have high blood pressure. I used to have high blood pressure. I got rid of the oils, got rid of the animal products and the sugars, and I exercise and I get quality sleep, daylight sun, regulating my hormones, and I take herbs and supplements and balance my hormones. And that's what I do. And oil has its place, but in the whole food state. Walnuts are fantastic source of essential fatty acids. Uh, Brazil nuts, etc. cetera. Um, eat the whole olive. Don't be afraid. It's good for you. <laughs> so get back to the question that you asked, Stephen. In the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, when people came to Hippocrates, this was a fruit festival. And then they asked Anna Marie and I to assume the directorship in 1980. And within a 24-hour period, I started to look at my work at the Institute in a much different, different way than I did the day before, that I was now responsible for people who came to us from all over the world with a high level of disorder uh, for the potential survival. And I don't know how it happened, but people would come to me and say, you know, when I drank a lot of beet juice or carrot juice, fructose rich, when I ate the mangoes you put out or the oranges you put out or the, the watermelon you put out, look what happened and they'd show me 
visible tumors. And they were coming. And after about the fifth one, I got it. But this was difficult for me since probably 50, 60% of my diet then was fruit. So when you get personally uh, into this and you start to look at it as only you, uh, we're much different creatures than possibly the person that came to us with diabetes or low blood sugar or cancer or viral diseases, you know, et cetera. In the, in the 80s, it was a lot of HIV, and we just began to understand chronic fatigue syndrome, used to be called Epstein-Barr. And I started to realize that what we were told was sort of a, 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 a question that was a blanket question and the statement was a blanket answer, that all sugars are not equal, that white sugar is different than, uh, than honey and honey is different than maple syrup. And then I really looked at the data. And the data is white sugar is 100% sugar, brown sugar is 98.6 sugar, honey is 98% sugar, maple syrup 65 to 70% sugar, agave syrup is one of the worst, it's more than half fructose, that's uh, you know, 75, 80% sugar, and the list goes on, date sugar, now they get sugar out of coconuts, and it precipitates the development of all microbes, meaning viruses and bacteria, and grows cancer. Now, we were the lone wolf. So I'm out at medical conferences back 44, 43 years ago, and they almost booed me off the stage because I, I have a hard time to get people to eat fruit and vegetables, no less saying, by the way, now you have to get away from that if you're ill and only eat a small amount of fruit. But now the science is in. So UCLA did a study a number of years ago and actually stated clearly that fruit sugar stimulates the growth of cancer, which we've seen. Uh, Thomas Seifrey, who you know is somebody that we've had on The Real Truth About Health, and I've had here, he's become a colleague, basically has proven that over the years. And more important than all of that, in our clinical setting here, with tens of thousands of people over the last 43, 44 years since we eliminated it, and remember, from the 1980s until the very early 2000s, we were doing dark field analysis. My wife was training most of the doctors in the United States on dark field. So we were observing that. So the way we saw that was maybe a little bit different than Nick does. And uh, I'm not saying that he's wrong. You know, he's at this point speaking about his personal experience. I hear that a lot. I'm speaking about working with, in my case, almost 300,000 people uh, since 1970. And not only here, but when I ran centers in Europe. And uh, so I'm very clear that eating fruit that is high, high on sugar 28, 30, 32 times higher than the original fruit. And by the way, eating it on ripe, and even in Southern California, with Dr. Degato is there, uh, it's hard to get ripe fruit. I mean, you can't even get a ripe orange in Florida. <laughs> so on ripened fruit degradates. One of the few commercials I've seen in decades that tell the truth, there's a, a female dentist on, if you watch closely, and says, even healthy foods can destroy the teeth. Well, she's right. Unripened fruit will take enamel off, will actually eat away a tissue mass, give acidity levels in the body. So that's my understanding after working with so many people and watching this with our medical team with advanced science for the last several decades. Okay. Um, in terms of hormones, to increase our hormones, and again, not to take up all the time, but what is not the theory of it, but the action step that we should be taking to make sure that we have enough hormones. What, what, what should we do? What actually should we do? What, you know, what should we take something? Should we lift weights, go in the sun? What do you do to have enough hormones? You can hormones. almost answer that. The, the, the two things you said, both Dr. Delgado and I agree with. Lifting weights are number one and getting in the sun is right there number two. <laughs> Correct. And also, I, I, would, I would lend to say that it, it's very important to help the body to heal itself. And as we age, the, the hormone levels that we experience, the hormone levels are dependent on your age. My hormone levels and my clients, I know, start to decline around 28, 30, or 40 years of age. 
And as they decline, you see the decline in function. The problem is that the plant-based doctors will say that we don't know enough about hormones, even though there's a quarter million studies on growth hormone alone. <laughs> exactly. There's tons of studies on testosterone and DHA and estrogen. My next book coming out besides uh, how to stop aging is on estrogen dominance because we do truly have a problem with estrogen dominance. Drinking beer increases estrogen dominance, consuming all animal product. Animals have estrous cycles. We're taking in their estrogen. This is toxic. I don't care how much testosterone you take, how much sun you get, how, how much you exercise. If you're eating animal products, you're going to have bitch tits. Excuse me, gynecomastia. Guy's going to have man boobs. He's going to look <laughs> like a woman as he gets older. Men have higher testosterone, according to Eugene Shippen, than a menstruating woman at age 25 when a man is 50. And a woman has more testosterone than a man. So what in the heck is going on, guys? We have to man up and not be injecting with synthetic testosterone, but learn how the bioidentical hormones work. And when I met Jeffrey Life, he was fat bellied. He had uh, using some weightlifting and, and then he went to hormones and he weightlifted and uh, he was on an animal diet, but he got off the animal diet and he got leaner and in better shape. And uh, this is a picture of him age 77. But then by the age of 84, he let the meat slip back on and now he looks a little more chunky. But the point is, Jeffrey Life himself will tell you, as we age, we need to monitor our hormones very, very closely. It's very important that we take into account Jack Lane, age 96, me turning 69. You know, hormones are critical. And any man who doesn't get his hormone levels measured and any woman who doesn't have her testosterone, estrogen, cortisol levels, and 38 different metabolites, not just in the blood, it needs to be measured in the urine because that's going to show the metabolites that are far more dangerous to the human body and cause cancer. And every cancer, according to Mark Rosenthal uh, out of Florida, Every cancer he's tracked has some relationship to excess estrogen. It is a pandemic and we need to address that issue. So I might say that although, yes, we do need to get enough calories and then going back to my answer on fruit, I think you don't eat fruit all day like a fruitarian. That's not smart. You do need in proportion based on your body weight where you're at. So if you're overweight, you eat more greens, you sequence more greens, uh, vegetables, vegetable soups, uh, and, and you slip in fruit. And at the end, you eat the more dense foods if you're trying to lose weight. If you're trying to gain weight, you sequence in and you get more uh, sweet potatoes, beans, and more calorically dense. So all of these things play a role. That's absolutely essential. <music> 